Pollock retired in 1987 with a record 12,409 runs in Curry Cup matches. At an emotional ceremony in Cape Town in 2000, he was named South Africa's Cricketer of the Century. A uh, selection panel sat down to select South Africa's greatest cricketer of the century. And Pollock was named that person and everyone commented and it is without a doubt that the selectors had as easy a job of picking their number one cricketer as Australian selectors would have had picking their number one cricketer. Just as Bradman was very, very clearly the greatest Australian cricketer of the 20th century, so too Pollock was the greatest cricketer of South Africa. Pollock's simple yet devastating approach to batting continues to influence South African cricket today. Said to John T, you know, the more runs you score past the bowler, it tells you that you're playing well, that you're playing straight. And I remember he got a hundred at Lords a couple of years ago, and I saw him after the test, and he said right through his innings, it, it went through his mind the whole time. He tended to play too square, and obviously, I mean, he, he laid himself open. And he just said, every time I hit one past the bowler, I, I thought to myself, you know, I can't be playing badly. The highlights packages of Graham Pollock are always kind of his whole innings almost. I mean, he had a lot of, I think he had a lot of boundaries. I, I don't remember him scampering too many singles. Um, but I, that's the kind of player that he was. I think he, he found the gap really, really well. I remember the talk he came and spoke to the South African side and he just said, you know, it's, it's vital that if the guy bowls you a bad ball, it must, must go to the boundary. And, and judging by what I saw, the highlight packages of him, um, well, any half-decent ball, you know, what didn't even have to be a bad ball, but most of the time he, he kind of pierced the gap and, and made sure the ball got to the boundary. I'm really glad that he's back and involved because I think he's got a whole lot to offer South African cricket and, and we'd be the poorer for not having utilised that and tapped that. Although Pollock continues to inspire the next generation of South African cricketers with his approach to batting, his training regime is unlikely to survive the test of time. Graham Pollock was probably the Doug Walters of South African cricket. Uh, um, you know, he was, he was always there to sit around and have a drink with at the end of the day's play and I don't remember seeing uh, Graham run any more laps of the Oval than Doug Walters did. I must say, I, I, just saying how when I see these guys sort of running around and, and pre-game training, it really uh, it doesn't make sense to me. I, I, my whole thing is that uh, as a batsman, as long as my eye was sharp and uh, you know, if I did go and have a, a net or whatever it is, I'd have a bat for five, ten minutes. I mean, to run around the field was just way out of line. And I, I just thought I had to conserve energy, uh, hopefully believing maybe I'd spend some time out there. And uh, I just think it's overdone today, I really do. Continuing the Pollock cricketing dynasty is Sean Pollock, Graham's nephew. That whole Pollock family, there's, there's, quite a, um, there's, there's definitely a, a passion for the game, and Peter and Graham and, and now Sean as well. He was great to watch, you know, made you real proud as, as, a, as a family member. Um, and I think going by what people have said about him uh, in his youth and, and even in the, in the latter part of his career, uh, he was an exceptional batter and uh, one that everyone enjoyed watching bat. Graham Pollock played in 23 test matches. He batted 41 times for 2,256 runs at an average of 60.97. Of all test batsmen to play 20 or more innings, he has a batting average second only to that of Don Bradman. It's often said in cricket that statistics can lie, and to a degree that's true, but it is impossible to downgrade the importance of Graham Pollock's test batting average. Only four men in the history of the game who've played more than 20 test innings have averaged more than 60, and Graham Pollock is one of those four. You've got Bradman right up there at 99.94, but then you've got Pollock running second at 60.97, then Headley, then Sutcliffe above 60. And underlining Pollock's greatness is the fact that he only played four test matches after his 23rd birthday. I wonder if he'd been given the opportunities that some of his contemporaries had got, just how many runs he might have scored, what batting average he might have finished with. In a sense, perhaps we didn't see all the Graham Pollock at test level that we could have, and perhaps his stats might have been as clearly ahead of the rest of the field as Bradman is ahead of everyone else. To bowl to? Almost impossible. Just almost impossible. So, Graham Pollock, up there, as far as I'm concerned, with the very best ever. Graham Pollock did play, fortunately, 22 test matches. So he had, a, he had some sort of a career in international cricket and a very good one. But then that career being curtailed at the age of 26, when he was probably heading into his prime, 
would have been a massive blow for him. He, he was a little bit of a different personality to, to Barry Richards. I think maybe he dealt with, with it, I wouldn't say better, but maybe a little bit easier. And he was able to continue and to play first class cricket and seemed to get satisfaction out of that. I've no doubt that uh, Graham Pollock would certainly have been one of the greats had uh, he played as much test cricket as um, all the others who were listed in that regard. The tragedy is that, you know, because of circumstances, he never had the career that others have had. To think that all those wonderful years of his youth and that were, were missing from test cricket is a, is a tragedy because it, he would have been ranked with anybody. The fact that he won such universal acclaim in such a short international cricket career is indicative of Pollock's superior batsmanship, and it is for his sublime timing and his destructive, dominating batting that Graham Pollock ranks amongst ESPN's legends of cricket. <laughs>